Good morning guys and uh, welcome to Open Smart. Racing today comes to us from Turfontaine and we have a nine race card so the first race is uh, not part of the exotics. Um, the first race is also 2600 meters so uh, not a whole lot um, that can go right over that much uh, distance. First choice here, Captain Chorus. Second choice, brand new Cadillac. Third choice, our Coys. And fourth choice, Fact. Not a whole lot separating any of these. Um, pretty much, uh, even Oyster King can actually probably win this with the best bat curve in this field. Only four P stats to talk of. Captain Chorus, the 40% on 2.8 on opening betting being the highest. Um, yeah, I'm not going to have any bet on uh, on the first race at uh, Turfontein. So let's move over to the second. And in the second year, I am going to have a little nibble on two horses here. My first choice, the Eighth Lord, and my third choice, Solace. Now, the Eighth Lord at 10 to 1 has run against uh, a couple of these guys before, like tight five, the favorite, on the 3rd of December, 1600 Turfontaine Merit Rate at 84, um, when Nokwe was riding, was starting at 8, drifted to 16, obviously there wasn't any intent or anything for on the day, because Nokwe was riding and not Hewitson, and today Hewitson's back, but on that same day, uh, Pierre Stradon was second, and he's carrying three kilos more today, where Type 5 is carrying two kilos more today. So, um, Type 5, uh, the eighth Lord for at 10 to 1 or Type 5 at 2.8, I'd rather be going with the eighth Lord for uh, some value in this race, to be quite honest. The other one that I've also um, liked is this Solace. He's only done the one run. But that one run was in yielding conditions, and in yielding conditions, uh, it did a 57.84 adjusted time, which is flying for yielding conditions, in my opinion, over the 1200, and uh, 57.84 over the 1200, uh, nothing else in this field has got close to that, um, and that was also with 60 kilos on his back, today he's only carrying 54, and he's now got Ryan Mungi instead of Craig Zaki. And Ryan Munger has a 50% chance to place on the uh, stats. And at the track, a 63% chance to, to place for Ryan Munger. So uh, the jockey trainer also looks pretty good. So I will be um, going with a bit of a hedge on the 8th Lord. You can get 12 to 1 for the 8th Lord. And Solis, you can get 11 to 2 on. And you can get 2 to 1 for the 8th Lord to place, and Solace you can get even money to place in the top 3, so that would be my play. In the third, it's a very open race again, um, Storm Commander has gone as my first choice because he's only carrying 49.5 kilos, and he does have flames with Candace Dawson, 50-50 on the win place jockey. Um, Dawson also has Yeni on the Royal Escapade, that comes from a rest, best medium speed, could also be anything. And then Terry also got against the grain, that looks pretty decent here, with the best bat figures by four lengths and exact course and distance bat figures, better than Storm Commander on that. Um, and these two also have the best and second best on Rini points. Um, adjusted times also going to against the grain, speed rating against the grain, and very important, the super rule at 80% is quite nice. So um, against the grain and storm commander, the first two choices with Dan the Lad at 25 to 1, my third choice, Oscar Wilde, my fourth choice, and there is a greenie later for Mike de Kock, Diorama as my fifth choice. And uh, important to note that Nathan Clink's only got the one runner for the day, one ride for the day, so that could also be upset. Royal, Royal Escapade Dawson's got a stable mate here, also at 10 to 1, and Crank It Up uh, is the favourite. Uh, could be anything thing returning from the rest, but his form on the back before the rest wasn't great all that well, wasn't worth the, the, the favouritism. 
And then Alec Laird has been in very good form. So Samurai Jack is another one that I would say would have a chance. So take as many as you can here. Yeah, I've gone 1, 2, 10 and 6 in my PA. 1, 2, 10 and 6. Storm Commander against the Grand and the Lad and Oscar Wilde. Um, it does look pretty open, that leg. Race 4. Here yeah, are the Alec Laird other runner for today with Kumalo riding. If you see a Macaulay is riding this one and Kumalo's on Dan the Lad at 25 to 1. The very next race, Phoenix looks like a decent little value at 13 to 2 for me. Even 10 to 11 for a top 4. Um, Phoenix looks pretty decent here for me. And I think the biggest dangers is Magical Flight and Roa. Now, if I look at these three runners then uh, you can see the 5th of January 1600 vol Phillies and May 76 both Phoenix ran in the Philly, uh, on that day 1600 vol um, but different races uh, Magical Flight ran in a 93 Phillies and Mares and Phoenix in a 76 Phillies and Mares now Magical Flight was 55 kilos and Phoenix was 57 Magical Flight goes up 5 to 60, Phoenix goes down 1 to 56, so there's a 6 kilogram uh, improvement there for Phoenix. Um, he did adjust the time 60.26 versus Magical Flight 59.61, um, but because of the huge change in the weights, you can see the two of them 16.24 on the bat and 15.3 on the bat. It's very, very close together on the bat form, and I would expect Phoenix to be giving me a little bit more improvement still on only his third run. So I do like Phoenix as my first choice, Magical Flight as my second choice, and Roa as my third choice. If I look at Roa's um, form, he did a 60-71 on 1400 Turfontaine, which is a really good 1400 Turfontaine if you consider Phoenix could only do a 62-36. Um, and Roa could do a 60-76. Roa is also carrying 6 kilos left today, so that does mean that all of a sudden Roa has the best bat 42 days and bat 84 days uh, by 4 or 5 lengths better than Magical Flight and Phoenix. So I do think Roa at 7-1 to one is another decent little prospect. My fourth choice would be Perfect Angel, the stablemate for Miyawu's only right for the day, but uh, I think definitely Phoenix is the preferred for the stable, or I would imagine so. Then Swiss Bank, as my fifth choice, uh, doesn't have the same kind of bat figures than those ones mentioned, and Mode, as my sixth choice, as the Farnes Buerta has been in really good form, and uh, he is impro improving slightly, 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 22 to 19 to 17, so he's going in the right direction, but I think Phoenix, Magical Flight and Aroa is probably the ones that we need to look out for. Um, and I've gone 1, 6 and 7 in my PA and Bipot, and in the pick 6 as well, in the bigger pick 6 I've added um, the ones mentioned, which is uh, Perfect Angel, Swiss Bank, Mode, and also afternoon tea, the 10. In the fifth race, um, yeah, the first choice is Spring Break, followed by Thumbs Up. And Spring Break's quite a nice little cushion on the bat form. Um, um, but in saying that, Thumbs Up has a nice little cushion on the adjusted time and on the speed rating. So I think those two is definitely correct in the market for being the ones... Uh, most liked. You got uh, Portico at the bottom on T curve here, but does have some good back figures. Um, so he's not going to be my third choice. Midnight Caller is going to be my third choice. The Mowing and Mowing combination with the best exact course and distance blue back here. Informative, my fourth choice with 20 to 1 forever light. 20 to 1, my fifth choice with the tongue tie off, and then only Portico at uh, 1.6. So I'm hoping that uh, either one of those roughies or spring break and thumbs up is going to do this for me. In the bipod, I think two and three is enough. Bigger perm, midnight caller, informative, six and five added. 
um, the same with the Pixel 2356 and then Forever Light the 7 at 20 to 1. Um, I'm going to take a chance and not take the favorite in this race. Race 6. Here we have a greenie in the form of Battle of Trevalgar. Mike the Cock with Callan Murray. And uh, he does have uh, some decent credentials based on overall ranking, greenie points, exotic ranking, form, intent, total T curve. Um, not all that much better than all of me, the second one, 55.47. So probably a good idea to just hedge on that because on the bat form there's only two lengths between these two and then there's quite a gap to the rest of the field my third choice being the favorite 008 my fourth choice being the decock uh, stable mate risk taker at 7.5 with craig zaki taking the ride and then rock the globe terry and hewitson my next best um he does come back from a rest and the last time on the 24th of november which does suggest he's probably going to be improving after such a rest. And then Talon, um, the, the Cock and Schwartz, as my sixth, another the Cock. And then Mowing uh, has uh, Dickon here at 20 to 1 with the best adjusted time speed rating and median speed in Winter Storm. Um, that also gets the 1.5 kilos off the back as my seventh choice and Angel's Power as my eighth choice. So I have gone with. 1, 2, and 5, Battle of Travelga, All of Me, and 008 in my buy pot. Um, and I've added also Risk Taker in my pick 6, 1, 2, 5, and 4. And I'm hoping that these roughies here, that's also somewhere in it, it's not going to perform something like Winter Storm um, with the pacifiers taken off because his bat is a bit worse than Battle of Travelga in the seventh race. And yeah, I quite like the chances of. Mike the Cock to win this race, either on Al Multana, which is my first choice, coming from two features, um, GBST and Dungan, and the next best, Naji, um, that does have the 1800 form, which Al Multana doesn't have, and uh, Callan Murray does choose this one, um, and not Al Multana, which Pierre Stradom is on board, but in saying that, the adjusted time for Al Mutana was pretty decent on 60 kilos, 61.97, and the time before that, 61.07. Huge support in the market, 14 into 3.65, where Nachi has not run in features after his maiden juvenile plate. He's gone from a maiden to a merit rate of 80 to a merit rate of 87. But in saying that, he's adjusted time figure of the 1861.22. Carrying 56 is uh, very much the same as the 6197 for El Mutana, and uh, given El Mutana has now got 4 kilos less, and last time only did 1600, the 1800 is probably going to be a bit less. So I think those two are very close together, and uh, not a bad idea to hedge those two, in my opinion. My third choice will go to give me the go ahead, and uh, his 1800 turpentine form wasn't all that bad but it wasn't all that great either 62 53 which is clearly not as good as Nachi but in saying that um, his merit rating is only 86 and Nachi's got gone straight to a 93 already so that would mean that his back figures of 6.1 does bring him very much in this as well and Joey Soma could also be surprising here the same as what I spoke about earlier on Solace he could be surprising here on Kimi Go Ahead as well. So I do think that those three is the first three choices. Then Baymax is my fourth choice. Shai Akbar, my fifth choice. Second base, FS Squadron and Bold Jazz. So um, in the buy pot, I have gone five, six, seven, and eight. Um, but I do think maybe the two the cock al mutana that's also been gelded and nachi is perhaps enough but uh, give me the go ahead for soma and baymax for peter and saki my next best i think those four is hopefully enough to get you through the pick six as well you see Ansif Mafira Mijania has the best back 42 form on second base and uh, second base has got Four wins out of his five runs to date, which is obviously incredibly good. But only the last one on the 4.35, when uh, coming back from the bit of a break on the 19th of December, 
was actually a very good run compared to these other guys. These others weren't as good. Um, and uh, it did get quite a hike. Merit rate had gone from 90 to 98. And after he won on that run, he's jumped to 104. So um, I don't know if he can keep on jumping like that, but he must have some sort of a chance. Any horse that wins four out of five must be pretty decent in it. Um, he does have Majan on, on again, not Gavin Lorena, but Majan has one on him before as well. And he did make huge improvement from 16 to 18 when he did those bad figures. So second base has to be included in your permutations as well. Then in the eighth, I've gone with uh, quite a tough race here, Phillies and Mares 75. So I think it is a tough one to get through. It's also the last leg of the picks of the jackpot and that normally is trouble so i have gone one seven three and ten which is the traveling world leader seven pin up the one illuminate the three which is the first for bread weber for the day the next one coming and then twice the fact lucky hood larkas and Jean again after he had solid base with the unsubtle feeling in the previous so those four i think is my first four choices but it's going to be quite a tough race i've also added the six and the nine only the brave and emmeline as my other two roughies in this race you'll notice that uh, the the betting is quite open in this race and uh, i must say anything even like uh, mazari at 40 to 1 is not too far off considering best exotic ranking in the field and then Virokana is another one I wouldn't mind adding, Jay Soma and Munger. Um, so Soma's got a few nice runners here. Virokana, the worst of them for me. And Solace, the best of them for me. And then in the last, it's a merit rated 84. And I've gone with five horses in my PA. The Contractor, Written in Stone, Weber and Stratum, Hurricane Headley. 25 to 1 with some really decent credentials, best overall ranking, best bat curve, bat 168, bomb 168, bam, bomb curve. Fitzwilliam, Shams in really good form, and Liquid, the answer from Fear, and it's got another decent run here. So those five is my first choice. And then 7 and 11 added in my pick six convexity and, uh, <coughs> sorry, Pigeon Rock and Louis the Seventh, 7 and 11. That's it guys, till tomorrow, have a great day.